Okay? Okay, so Bob's hours are on there. Um, yeah, and so um, here's, you know, an overview of how this class is working. Um, and, you know, this is a, the intent, so the attendance policy, I guess we'll get right to it because it is kind of first up there. Um, what I was trying to convey in there is, if you have, you know, any sort of symptoms of, of you know, uh, fever or, or, you know, congestion, all the, all the uh, typical um, symptoms, so forth and so on, um, don't come. If you have been exposed to somebody who is positive for COVID, don't come. Uh, you should not come. And I will work with you. We will, we will get, you know, what you miss figured out and stuff. At the same time, I don't want to convey that uh, coming to this lab, oh, it's optional. You, you, you come if you want, you, you don't come if you don't want type thing. Um, it's not an optional uh, lab class. Does that make sense? It, it's got to be you know, a health-related reason type thing, OK? Um, but I don't want you to be like, oh, this is the second time. You know, Gideon's going to be like, oh, no, I won't, OK? You, you know, I, I, am, I am trusting upon you guys and stuff, okay? So we will make it work one way or another. We will make it work, okay? I am doing something um, that I've never done before. I'm going to drop the lowest uh, assignment grade for just that kind of reason. So that if, you know, God forbid you do, uh, you know, get COVID uh, and you're quarantining for a while and stuff like that, um, you know, we, we can... We can always make accommodations. I can get your data that you can then process and analyze and stuff like that. We can do it that way. Um, if it's also one you just want to say, you know what, I have COVID. This is going to be my one where I, I'm not going to hand it in. And Gideon's dropped on the last, the lowest one, so it don't matter. Okay. I would, you know, I've, had, I've done it in other classes before, and students do it like on the first one. You know, I, I put it in the bank and as as insurance policy and, and save it for down the line. You know. Um, but that, that's up to you guys, okay? Does that make sense about the attendance policy? It, okay. Is there any questions about that stuff? Okay. Do you want us to just email you pretty much and be like, explain the situation? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, that sounds good. And uh, by the way, I use really only one email. Um, I think there's another email embedded inside of Blackboard. I use gburger at hpu.edu. The one that's on the syllabus, super easy. My first name, my last name, burger, like hamburger, it's like W. Uh, okay, uh, you gotta do the daily health checks. Um, I have an academic integrity document. Uh, I don't know if you got a chance to see that. I, I need you to read that front to back. For whatever reason, um, God bless us, this student, this, this, this class has produced, I almost need to say, many academic integrity, that's a fancy euphemism for cheating, um, academic integrity issues over the years. And, it, and this is what really sucks when you're in my shoe. I have to talk to a bunch of folks like you guys and talk, you know, oh, can't do this. And you wouldn't do it, and it's insulting. I'm like, what the hell, I wouldn't do that. You know, why are you talking to me like this? So sorry, I deeply apologize to all of you who wouldn't and stuff like that. There's that one percent and I've got to reach them because it is horrible. It's horrible when that happens. I am under obligation uh, as part of my contract to pursue it and then to get to the bottom of it, to deliver consequences, fill out a report that then goes to the dean and goes on to student affairs and stuff like that. Um, and I always say, and it's in this integrity document, I always say, I get the temptation. I so get the temptation. I was a student, and I was not a good student. I was a bad student for much of my, I turned it around, and I, you know, and I was a really good chemistry student and by the time I got to chemistry, so don't worry. Well, again, what do we pay for? This idiot doesn't even know chemistry. No, I know chemistry pretty good, but in high school and in my first, I have two undergrad degrees, my first undergrad degree, so I so get the temptation. Um, but, you know, as I say, it's like robbing a bank for 10 bucks. You're taking all the risk of robbing a bank, and the payoff is, you know, one lab report in one 
class that's worth one credit, it makes no sense. Um, and you're, you're risking a lot uh, with the, the heap of mess that falls down on a student when they get nailed on this kind of thing is, is horrible. So um, another old man thingy I got in that academic is sometimes you got to take your licks and likes. And that's a hard lesson to learn. I was, I was in my mid-20s before I realized that, that there's some times where you just got to take your licks. You, you're not ready. You haven't done the report. You haven't studied for the test. You know, you did what it, you've been to watch something on Netflix, you know, whatever. It's okay. You'll survive. Show up, take your legs, and, and move on with your life. Okay? Uh, so I need you to um, read that over carefully, then you sign it, and then I actually am requiring a photo ID that, that you take a picture of or scan, and then you put it into the, into the thing. We are then going to hand that in via Blackboard. I have never done this before. I've never had students hand things in via Blackboard. So there's no PUCA, there's no place for you to do that yet. I have to figure that out, and I will figure that that's on my to-do list uh, today and tomorrow to figure out how to make PUCAs where you guys can hand stuff in on Blackboard. Okay? Um, all right. There is also a uh, VMware. VMware is actually pretty cool because there's a lot of uh, computing stuff that you have to do as a student that sometimes you kind of need an IP, a, an HPU IP address, okay? Um, or it's software that doesn't work on Macs. That's a common problem we have. And there's a software in this class that we use a bunch that does not work on Macs. It will work on Macs if you have that thing where you can create a Windows, you know, sort of shell on top of your Mac, but I think you got to be pretty like tech savvy to do that kind of thing. I, I have no idea how to do that kind of thing. And I even that's a MacBook, yeah, yeah. I, I, students love them; they're they're common. Um, yeah, and there's no good software like this software. It's called ChemSketch for the Mac. So. What VMware does, if you get VMware, does anybody have VMware? Anybody already? Oh, rock on. Yeah. You then become like a terminal. Your thing is just a terminal. HPU, you know, you have an HPU IP address and you could be, you know, on the North Shore. Um, so then, and then you just are accessing the software. You, you know what I mean by a terminal? You're, you're no longer really using your computer. Um, it's software and stuff like that. You're using... HPU software and, and stuff via disk. So what I did is I made a VMware assignment to figure out how to download it. That, that can be kind of tricky and stuff like that. And there's a link that I need to send you that I had failed to send you when I, when I put this in the syllabus. There's a link um, to how you get to like HPU's distribution of VMware. Okay, so I will send that out. Sorry about that, I had forgotten that I did that. Um, I did this for spring. I made a video of how to, of how to do it. Okay, so we'll give that a try. That's a, uh, you know, that's an easy 100 points. Okay, that's an easy, um, so get, just get it done. Let me know if there's problems though, okay? All right. Um, there's always going to be uh, reading that you need to do before you come in, okay? And that's pretty well delineated on the schedule. Now, the schedule, it's got two columns. And I don't know, I, I never had students get confused, and then I had two students last year confused by this. There's reading that you need to do on both in both columns. Yeah, because it says, you know, here's the experiment that we're going to do, and here's some additional back, typically background reading. Okay? Um, so, you know, for next week, you need to, to read these pages and these pages, um, and then do this background reading and stuff, okay? Um, reading those things beforehand is super important for a number of reasons. It makes the lab, when you're in here, go much easier than if you're, you know, your eyes are, are looking at that for the very first time while you're trying to do the experiment. You really don't want to ever do science that way, you know, if you go on to do research or whatever. Um, it's a safety issue. If you are using, you know, uh, corrosives or carcinogens and stuff like that, 
it can be a safety issue where uh, you know you're you're not prepared. You're kind of fumbling a little bit because you, you haven't pre-read the stuff. So it's absolutely critical that you do that reading. There's also pop quizzes. I used to use some uh, euphemism name so I didn't have to say pop quizzes because it's such an ugly word to students. But if they're pop quizzes, there's no, no nice way to put it. Oh, but they're easy if you've read the experiment. And what I always say is, and it, the, there's a bunch of reading here, focus on the procedure, okay? The, the actual physical things that you're gonna do in lab. Because that's what the quizzes will typically be focusing on, okay? Read, and the procedures are short. They don't take long to read. Read the procedure three times, and then you're good. You'll do well on the quiz. I always make the quizzes, um, there's 20 points available, and they're out of 15. So you can move, lose five points and get a perfect score, okay? So that, you know, oh gosh, I didn't know that one thing, and I got hammered. No, nope, you know, there's a, we got a system for that, okay? Um, and again, that's easy. That's easy, you know, uh, grade points and stuff. Um, and then we have assignments, what are really worksheets. They are worksheets. Uh, we used to do uh, full lab reports for every experiment we did in here. And it was point of diminishing return. It was too much busy work for you, and then it was too much busy work on the grading side. And so we decided to pull out parts of, the, um, of a full lab report and put them into a worksheet form. Okay. Um, I will tell you now that we're talking about the worksheets, the, the place where students have, have accidentally got their toes over that academic integrity line is the worksheets, and in particular, we're going to draw pictures of molecules. You've seen these pictures, you know, if you've seen, you know, cap, people have got the shirt caffeine and stuff. Um, you're going to draw structures and you're going to draw something called mechanisms uh, with ChemSketch, with drawing software. And students in the past, oh, hey, can I come on your, yeah, okay, cut, paste, that's plagiarism. Uh, uh, straight and simple. And when I get into that, and it's the absolute worst part of my job, when I'm sitting in with the student, the student says, oh, I use the same software, that's why it looks the same. No, it's drawing software. If I draw a picture of a bunny, and Michaela draws a picture of a bunny, there's no way our pictures of bunnies are gonna be superimposable, and just like with the ChemSketch software. If I draw a mechanism of uh, aspirin synthesis, and Michaela draws a, a um, Aspirin synthesis, it is, it's impossible for them to be superimposable. It's just drawing, it's just drawing with a computer. Like, uh, you know, that's the only difference. Okay? So, be careful of that. And the way you avoid this is never exchange digital copies. If, you, if somebody, hey, I don't understand the mechanism, how does that work and stuff. Oh, yeah, no problem. Let me show you how it works and stuff like that. That's all good. Knock yourself out. Talk to each other. That's part of college. That's great. Okay? But as soon as you start sending digital copies back and forth, Guaranteed. And I've had students who said, okay, I'll send you my copy. Don't copy it, but uh, you can take a look at it to guide you on doing yours. Guess what happens? They copy it. Inevitably. I've had, you know, so many students who are just crushing the class, and suddenly they're in academic integrity. Oh, yeah, I, I let them, they promised me they wouldn't copy it and stuff. And then now they're both in trouble. You know what I mean? So just don't send digital copies. Oh. Okay. I'm so sorry to talk so much about that. It's so, such a, I'm embarrassed that I have to talk to you guys about that. But I find that when I do talk about it a lot and make a big deal, it does reduce the likelihood of it happening. All right. Uh, all the due dates are on here uh, when these assignments are due. The assignments will be up on Blackboard. Um, normally, I like to have them all up there you know, the first day and stuff like that. Because of COVID and everything like that, I am making some modifications to them and stuff. Um, so they're not quite up there. I may just put them up there and then if we need to make a modification, I'll say, hey, don't do that one. Uh, I may do that. That might be a simpler way to go. So. Um, okay. So you. There was kind of a funny thing. We. The university decided we want our schedules of our courses more standardized. And so when they did that, they chopped the length of individual classes. Length, 
courses got, uh, you know, when it used to be maybe an hour and 25 minutes became an hour and 15 minutes. Okay, the labs were unaffected; they were exempt from that. So this lab didn't change. Then some other bureaucrats went, "Uh oh, our students aren't in class enough. If you add up all the minutes they're in class, they're not in the class enough. So let's extend the semester." We're at the shorter, I loved all of this, but it was really, it was great. It was great because I, you know, I like unpredictability. So, um, so then they lengthen the semester of the shorter classes so they're in there enough minutes. Again, we had we didn't change. We're already in here kind of a long time, and so there was talk of well, I guess we'll add some more experiments. There's a lot going on in this class. It's awesome. It's fun. We're gonna have a great time, but it's a lot. This this is this is a step up from from the amount of stuff you put into Gen Chem probably. And so I was like, no, we're not. We're just gonna stop early. So we stopped four pow at like uh, end of November. So um, so that's kind of a nice thing. I really like that too because then you can concentrate on your final exams and stuff like that. And this this thing will be all resolved and stuff like that. Um, so the lab worksheets are 85% of the final grade. 10% um, is these pop quizzes. Uh, and the VMware thing is 5% of the grade. Um, that's about that. We need to do a safety thing uh, in, in just a second. Are there any questions about how the class runs and stuff like that? We try to, how many people are in the lecture class with Dr. Horgan right now? Anybody not? Okay. Every once in a while we have somebody who's in a different school or something like that. We try to sync these things pretty well. They're not always perfectly synced. And sometimes that throws students a bit. They, they just 